Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. Yes, you are seeing three slimline cards <laughs> that I'm going to create. I'm actually going to show you how to make two of them. But I am really, really excited today because um, I have only made a couple slimline cards. They're the hottest new craze, so I'm jumping on the bandwagon and I'm going to have a great time. So Craft Galley has released a slimline die set, which makes this so simple. And I'm a sucker for a stitched board order and also these amazing alphabet dies. So I'm going to show you how these work because I was actually surprised when I cut them out. I did not know that they were actually two full alphabet die sets in one. So that was really a great surprise. So here I'm showing you I cut out all the letters. I figure I'll just keep a bunch on hand so when I make cards, I can just have them ready. Um, but you can see there's an outline that goes over the uh, solid part. So I thought that was so fun. That really is like two full alphabet die sets in one. So that was great. Um, so I'm going to show you here just kind of the layout of my card and what I'm kind of thinking of for the first one. I was originally only going to make one of these, but then because you get two die cuts from each letter, I decided to use the alternate for my other card. So you'll see what I'm talking about here in a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out some Bristol Smooth cardstock. I'm going to cut this down. I'll put the measurements on the screen, but I'm going to cut this down with the stitched border die. The um, great thing about this die set for the slimline dies is you can make frames, which is what I'm going to add to this one, um, this card here, which I think is so fun um, because it adds just that really extra something to your card. So, um, but I, you can also layer them and you can keep it consistent with the design. Okay, so I am going to bring in, you saw, saw I started out with three sort of similar colors, but I wanted to add a lot more punch to this card. So I brought in that um, chipped sapphire, I believe it is, or no, blueprint sketch is the darker color. And so I'm going to add that to the top so I can get a much more dramatic ombre look. So I'm using a, a blender brush here and I am going back and forth. Now, the um, obviously I wanted to talk about the blending in this, but I'm going to more so talk about it through the next card as well because it's a lot more, um, I would say, dramatic on that one because of the color scheme. Okay, so here I'm taking out some shimmer. Don't forget, you don't have to use just water when you're adding droplets. Uh, the part of me did not want to mess with this panel, but there was also a huge part of me that just loves the water droplet look. And then when you add it as shimmer spray, you get a shimmery water droplet, droplet look. So that's what I really wanted. So I went for it and I put it all over my panel. And then you want to have a clean paper towel to dab up and you can see the ink just kind of soak right through. Um, when It's not going to matter so much here because these are all blue colors, but when you have a paper towel, I'll talk about this when I do water droplets for the uh, rainbow color. Okay, so another reason why I was like, yes, slim line it, because it was so easy to use an entire spectrum of colors for this uh, rainbow cardstock or this rainbow uh, background. Normally, I find that I don't have enough space to work with or that it's, this is going to be hard to explain, but that it's too much across the panel to uh, get like a, a nice solid um, pigment look of color. But here I had this little area to work with and up and down and I have the length to put all the colors. So a lot of times I'll take three primary colors and just mix and get other colors from that. Totally fine. But because I have all of this to work with, I'm going through a lot of the spectrum. So I started off with candied apple, um, pumpkin, I believe was the next one, mustard seed, twisted citron, when normally on a uh, A2 size card panel, I would skip those. I would just go for the main ones and then hope I get some decent blend in between. But I've never done this before. I've never hit so many hues of these colors in my ink blending um, before on cards. And it really does make a difference. <laughs> um, I think the blends are smoother. I think in between the colors, it's just more seamless. Now you want to go, one of the best tips, this is a trifecta. When you want to get a great blend, it's a trifecta. So you're going to, you have to have the right paper, which I highly recommend Bristol Smooth, a right blending tool, which I would recommend a blender brush, and um, the, a good ink. 
And so this is a distress oxide, which blends perfectly. So you put those three together and you're bound to get a beautiful result. So that's definitely one of my major tips for that. Also, when you are doing it, you wanna go back once or twice. So I did the red, orange, back to the red brush. Do the orange, yellow, back to the orange brush, and so on and so forth, so that you can get that seamless look in between each color. But look at that. I was blown away. Okay, but you know I can't waste ink, so I sprayed it with my spritz, <laughs> my spray bottle, and which you can actually spray it with your uh, shimmer spray, which I did not think of until just this moment. And then I got this really fun um, rainbow background, which I'll just put in my background stash and use it for a rainy day. But that's so pretty. I loved it. Okay. And I didn't waste as much ink. Okay. So I'm going to clean up my surface here and then I'm going to take that shimmer spray again, which I will tell you I had issues with because I just wanted to stare at this beautifully blended background, but I thought, nope, I love the way this looks. Now, back to what I was saying before. When you have your paper towel and you pick up different colors, make sure when you are dabbing back onto your paper like I'm doing right here, that you switch it to make it clean. Because if I dabbed in the purple and went to the yellow, it would transfer. So just make sure that you don't transfer your inks and that you're picking it up with a clean paper towel. All right, the next bold move that I make is I'm gonna put down some black gouache. And um, this is like a mix between acrylic and watercolor. So it is perfect for splatters. Um, but I'm gonna pick it up, instead of just going right to the paper, I'm gonna use this flexible little uh, slick surface thing I have here, it's a cutting mat. And I'm gonna use that to flick on my uh, black splatters which I really ended up loving, which I'm glad I did. <laughs> I'm glad I ended up loving it. Hindsight, if I could redo this, I would have done two of these panels at the same time because I loved them so much. But um, yeah, I went, I took the risk and I loved it. You could obviously leave that without the black splatters, but I just thought it was very artsy. So this is kind of what my layout is starting to look like and how I want to put these cards together. Um, I'm trying to figure out, now you can see I went with the opposite here. So I took all the uh, inlay of the glitter cardstock for the top one and then the black for the bottom one. Um, but that's what's really great about those alphabet dies because you have both of the, um, of the letters in one set. So anyway, okay. So now I'm going to start putting my cards together. I'm using some liquid glue. I added, um, I was able to make one of those frames that was smaller than the largest size. Um, and I'm going to place that right down. I feel like it just does what it's supposed to in the name. It frames out your project here. Now, this was a little tricky to um, get my letters spaced out. You could see I have an exclamation point there um, originally, but when I started putting all my, my letters out, the outlines take up a little bit more space, so I was trying to overcompensate, and then I couldn't fit my exclamation point there. Although, hopefully the person who gets this knows that I missed them. <laughs> I don't just miss them. <laughs> All right, so uh, maybe I'll put the exclamation point on the inside, like when they open it, they can see it there. <laughs> That's what I meant. Oh, uh, all right, anyway, so here's what I'm doing with this card. So the other card you'll see, I don't think I show you me putting the letters together because it's boring. Um, but this one, I am going to have them at an angle as I'm putting them down. And um, you can see here, I just skipped ahead, uh, but don't forget that little O inside right there. And I'm gonna show you how I fix that on the next card. But I did that because I'm gonna make it look like they're hanging down from the frame. So almost like a banner of its own with the letters. So I'm gonna use my anti-static powder bag here and some glittery silver embossing powder to test it. Cause this is, remember this is oxide. Now it was a few hours, but I just wanna make sure it's completely dry. Then I'm gonna take a little ruler and an embossing pen, and I am going to just draw straight lines, bringing us up to the frame. So once I do that, I'll show you here, I'm gonna pour on some embossing powder, and then I'm going to heat set that after I get all the letters done. So you can see they're gonna shine right up, and they're gonna match, essentially, the frame as the, the silver glitter goes. So they did get some warping, but we'll combat that later. I had this awesome, thick foam tape here, which is just really good for backgrounds because if you're gonna pop up your panel and you're gonna send these through the mail, you wanna make sure that you have an even 
um, foam behind it so that it, you don't get divots uh, when they go through the machines and things like that. So uh, really highly recommend this foam tape. It's incredible. Okay, so I am going to um, start putting these panels down um, right here. This one here is just going to be centered onto a, a white, large, rectangle stitched uh, slim line die. And that's just on some regular 120 accent opaque card base. Those are my favorite card bases now. Uh, that or the 100. Either one is good, but it's just really substantial. Okay, so here's what I, I lost the little black line for this O, and instead of just die cutting another O, which I very well could have, <laughs> I took a black marker and drew it in. It worked just fine. Okay, so here I am getting my bases, my other base ready. And um, I am using my Teflon bone folder to, because it is heavy cardstock, uh, you want to make sure that you press that down really well. And I'm taking to this foam tape here again to make the same uh, look. Now the other one, I popped up the rainbow panel. This one, I'm popping up the whole thing. All right, so I'm just going to get that done. And then we're going to place it right down on our panel. I've seen people put liquid adhesive over their foam tape to give themselves some wiggle room. I did attempt that, but I didn't put enough liquid adhesive on there, so it, <laughs> it didn't really work in my favor. Okay, so, um, oh, I guess the other one just was some regular 100-pound 100, 100 car sack. Now I'm putting it on the base. I don't know. That seems redundant to me. Oh, it's because I wanted to use the stitch die. That's why. So, yeah, I wanted that seamless look with the stitch die, and so I cut that out of some... 100-pound um, accent, and now I'm putting it on the base. So this card is, like, super sturdy. But hopefully that will brighten up somebody's room if they decide to keep it when I um, send it off. And what's better than now is, you know, I miss you cards because I know there's a lot of people who we are not being able to see right now. I did add some coordinating colors of these uh, little embellishments here for this card, and I kept the other one the same. I thought the little banner... Uh, hang, hanging off the strings was good enough. So I kept that there. Um, but I'm going to show you the third card that I made. So this third card here coming up, um, this was a, I wanted to do a shaker card using the insert of that die right there. You can see that will not cut the rectangle size. It will cut inside the card stock uh, with those windows there. And so what I did was I grabbed out a bunch of elements that I had just laying around and the HBD from the, the uh, letters I just cut and I just started putting the card together. I did make it a shaker card and so um, I have some really thin foam strips that I was able to use very easily with this. Um, I could definitely show how I put this card together in another video, but I just wanted to make sure that I added it because that insert is really fun and so there's lots of shaker bits behind it and uh, it was just a lot of fun to make so I want to make sure I at least included the final project for this. So these are my final looks at the cards that I made. I'm really loving the slimline situation that's happening right now. It's super fun, and you could do a lot more on your cards. So just a reminder, this is a hop to celebrate these awesome products. So you can check out other people's creations to get inspired on how you can use them. Also, you can enter to win one of two $20 coupon codes to the store. Uh, you can do that by just commenting below. I will list everything I used for this video in the description box below, as well as other places to connect with me on my link tree link, and that will be right below the description as well. I will see you all in the comment section. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.